Hit that jab, jab, put it in pocket till I get back. Going downtown, see a man, and I ain't got time. Shake your hand. Hit that jab, jab, put it in pocket till I get back. Going downtown, see a man, and I ain't got time. My name is Matthew Epler, and I'm the inventor of Kinograph, which is an open source film scanner that digitizes reels of 35, 16, and 8 millimeter film. The Kinograph mission is to create an affordable open source machine for digitizing film. The cost for individuals, universities, museums to save the film that they have is just way out of reach. And if you have film, and you're thinking about scanning it, you don't really have many options. You have two, basically. You can send it to a lab, and it's extremely expensive, uh, or you can buy a machine, and they run, on average, at $250,000. There's a new one on the market that's cheaper than that, but still out of reach. So the mission of Kinograph is to make this process of taking celluloid film and saving it to a digital file as cheap as possible, and open so that it can be modified, improved over time, uh, and you're not locked into whatever a manufacturer says is the way it's going to be. I was a, a founding faculty member of a graduate film program in Jordan. While I was there, I took a spring break trip to the capital, Amman, and the Royal Film Commission, which is the, uh, the royal court's arm of of uh, film production had a garage and I, I walked in this garage and it's got mountains of rusty film cans. I say, hmm, what's that? And the answer I got was, we don't know, we want to get rid of it. It's like, oh, wait, please, let me take a look. So I did take a look. I spent my whole spring break up there photographing all the canisters. And then I built this little light box out of um, like a bathroom circular light, some cardboard and a point and shoot camera to see what was on there. And when I realized what was on there, it was some really interesting stuff. And I thought, man, it's a shame if this just you know, gets thrown away, which was the plan. We had a royal visit not too long after that from the king to check in on the school. And I cornered him and I showed him a picture of his dead father, the previous king. And I said, I've got more of this. I need your help. And he said, OK, how much? Um, and I lowballed him. But it turned out to be the best thing I could have done because what I found out is that for the small amount of money he gave me, I got almost nothing done. And fast forward a couple years, I'm at an interactive tech program at NYU. I need a thesis idea. And I think, you know what? There's got to be a way to make that easier. And so I took the hacker approach and said, what are the bare minimum things I can do to make a machine that my students back in Jordan can assemble with parts that can get on the internet and use their own cameras that's affordable and we'll save those films. So it was initially for that project, still is, and um, it was a good baseline, right? Because it was the perfect collection. It was an orphaned collection with no money and a bunch of enthusiastic people with basic equipment who would do something if they could. So Kinograph allows them to you know, try to preserve that legacy. There's two parts to this process. There's the capture and then there's the image processing. In terms of capture, um, I spent a lot of time with projectors when I was in college as a projectionist. And you know the basics are get it off one side, put it on the other, and in between, put some light on it. And uh, I tried to keep it as basic as I could. But the key to that has been a, um, a series of designs in 3D printing that allow me to create rollers with 35, 16, and 8 millimeter grooves, as well as um, precision located little bumps for, say, the sprockets. As far as the software goes, then you just have a, a card full of images, right? And you've got the soundtrack and the perfs on the sides, and then you've got the image, a little bit of extra on the top and a little bit extra on the bottom. The, the key then is like, how do I find that frame automatically? Because you've got thousands of them. Pull it out and then make it into a movie file. So the software that I uh, use for that is something that I wrote, and it's looking at the perfs, trying to identify where a hole is, and based on where those holes are, since the frame lines are standardized, grabs that frame, makes a new image file, and puts it in a folder for you. And then if you, you send that to QuickTime, it just 
does it for you. And then for the sound, sound is, a, is optical, it's on here as black and white waves. And the University of South Carolina uh, got a grant to develop software that would um, basically scan it digitally and convert those black and white values into a sound wave. I've had some conversations with them and they've released a new version and I think it's just going to keep getting better. So it's open source as well and that's good news for all of us. I, I'm looking forward to see how that develops. In terms of public response, there's, there's kind of two groups. There are the hardcore archivists who live and breathe this stuff every day and then there are the more maker types, do-it-yourselfers, um, and people who are enthusiastic about film. And the, the professional archivists are very skeptical. They're excited, like, but more of like a pat on the back, like, good job, kid, and, you know, um, probably won't work. And uh, I, I totally understand where they're coming from. They have very high standards. And in their world, if you're gonna preserve something, you should do it right. And it can be improved, certainly. How I plan on doing that is leveraging the community who are makers, who know things that I don't know, who are engineers, software developers. The goal is to keep improving this design over the next couple of months, and then when it's, when it's ready, send it to Jordan as a kit and let my students uh, use it as a case study, and then we'll see how, see how it goes. Kinograph is trying to cut through all of the perfectionism and say, this is how dirty and easy you can do it. And then from there, let's try to get up to something perfect. Instead of saying, here's the perfect machine, can I try to alter it a little bit to make it, you know, my own hack? No, we're gonna go to like the bare bones bolts of the process. Move film from there to there, and in the middle, take a picture. Put it on your computer, find the picture that you want, and save it, and that's it. From there, it's just a matter of improving everything bit by bit, and I, I'm trusting that there are nerds out there who have an interest in one tiny piece of this and can lend one sentence that will change it all. And then there will be others who just want to build one and make a crazy version of themselves in their garage and I look forward to it. I'm not in this to make millions, I'm in it to save the film. So whoever can help me do that is welcome to do so.